Okay, so you asked for a painting of a dog? Yes. His name is Benjamin. He's adorable. That's the name of the dog? Yeah. Benjamin? Benjamin. Okay. Hello and welcome. My name is Ibrishelis Vitella. And today I will walk you through the process of painting a dog wearing a cardigan. But first, I'm gonna grab some coffee. I'll see you in a bit. I was asked if I could make a painting of a dog. Now, when it comes to commissions, I have certain rules. That They're not really rules rules, but they're more like there are certain things that I am not all that interested in painting. If you were to send me a message and you were to ask, hey, can I get a wedding painting? I would probably say I'm too busy. If I were to get asked if I could paint a baby, I would also probably say I'm a little too busy. On that note, if you were to ask me for a dog painting, odds are I'm gonna say yes. When I was asked if I could make this dog portrait, you know, I gave my rates. I said, this is what it would be for ink. This is what it would be for acrylics. This is what it would be for watercolor. And then I was asked if I could make a painting of a dog wearing a cardigan. And I said, honestly, it doesn't really matter whether you choose acrylics or if you choose inks. It's going to look good and it's going to look funny. She said, yes, that's kind of what I'm going for. I'm going for something funny. And I said, well, if we go with the inks, we can make it look like an old ink illustration, Alice in Wonderland type of thing. And I said, or if we go with acrylics, then we can make it look like a classy painting. And honestly, that would kind of add to the humor, which is a different kind of humor. They're both kind of humorous, but one would be more New Yorker kind of thing. And the other one you would think Seinfeld comes to mind. I don't know why that came to mind, but that would be the kind of humor that I would associate it with. And then I was asked if I could go with the acrylics, which if I'm being honest, was the route that I was actually hoping for. <laughs> so I got a picture of the dog, what appeared to be a black, Labrador. And that was that. I wasn't given any more directions. I was just told a dog with a card again. In my sketchbook, I made a few drawings and one of them was of the full body of the dog with the card again. The other one was a close up and then the third one was kind of like a mid shot. At the end, I chose the mid shot. I felt it worked best. After picking what I felt was the best composition for this painting, then I went and, and started on the painting. So there are different things that I do. So when I buy canvas for myself, then I don't mind getting the cheapest of the cheapest. But if it's a client, then I will go for the highest level canvas that they have. Typically what you notice with these is that the boards are thicker. They are nicer for hanging. As far as canvas goes, I don't necessarily notice that much of a difference. Maybe there is, maybe there isn't, but maybe uh, maybe if I did a side-by-side -side comparison, I would be able to notice, I would be able to tell. It was a relatively small painting. The idea was to go for something that made it look like a classic painting, something like an old romantic kind of painting. Like when you go to your grandma's house or when you go to like a great grandfather, great grandfather's house or whatever, or like a house that's been in the family. And then there's this like old paintings of a grandpa up in the, above the fireplace. And that was kind of the idea of what this was gonna be. The making of the painting was pretty simple. First I sketched in the composition and then I went over it with a gray, kind of watered down acrylic. The reason why you go for a gray or a neutral color is that it allows you to really see the colors that you're laying down. When you have a white background and when you're adding color to it, then the contrast is off. But with the gray, it's already a neutral color. It's something in between. The colors that you're seeing are the colors that are gonna be there at the end. Once I did the, the gray, I went over it with a just an outline to kind of remind myself where everything is, just to measure again and to get everything where it was meant to be. Then at this point, it was about deciding how I wanted to layer this painting. He's a black Labrador. I've had a Labrador before, but mine was yellow. And I have a friend that actually has a black Labrador. And I've met other people with Labradors. And I kind of seen the way the, the hair, or kind of seen the way that it shine. And there are multiple ways of approaching this. You could certainly just go with gray. You could, but, but if we're being honest with the gray, it's kind of a dull kind of thing. 
So instead of going with the gray, I went with a blue base. From there, from the blue, then I started adding other colors above it to make it shine, to make it darker, to add dimensions to it. So obviously sometimes for like the, the highlights and I might add a little bit of white and then for the dark areas and I would add black or, or brown sometimes. A couple of times I might have added a little bit of red here and there. And really the, the thing is that when you start looking at, at anything really, really closely, if you start looking at, at any surface very closely, you start to realize that there are a lot of different colors in there. You know, because light reflects colors and there's there's multiple colors in there. You kind of start to realize that you could pretty much use anything that you want. It's all about color value. So long as the value is correct, it doesn't necessarily matter what colors you're using. Even in this painting, which was a black dog, you can still bring in a little bit of reds. You can still bring in a little bit of browns or just a little bit of like, I think I used green at one point or another. I used a little bit of brown, a little bit of yellow for the eyes because that's kind of the, the way the eyes of the dog were. I had to paint the cardigan and I had to think about which way I was going to go with the cardigan. The, the way that I chose the cardigan, well, well, two things. First, again, I was going for like an old school look. So I looked for a cardigan that a grandpa would wear. I had to pick a color. The way I saw it was the dog's fur, the base color of the dog's fur, the grays, the, the blacks, they're all kind of like in the bluish uh, hue. I figured the best thing to do is then to contrast that with the cardigan. And that's why the cardigan is kind of like in the orangey feel of the spectrum. That's a complementary color to the blue. So once I picked the color for the card again, then it was about what color can go in the background that would help out the cardigan pop out, but could also complement the fur. Cardigan is, is, is orangey, but there's a little bit of yellow to it. And the complementary color to yellow is green, but also green has nice harmony with blue. The background came about what color works well with blue, but also will make the yellow pop out. So it, that's the reason for the green. It was this thing where every single color had the strength to pop out. It was also like a, a team player, a color that could help other colors as well. You asked for a painting of a dog? Yes, his name is Benjamin. So this is the painting. Oh my god. <laughs> this is so cool. Oh, I love it. I had a lot of fun making this painting. When I was asked if I could make a dog painting, at first I was a little hesitant, but then when I was asked if it could be wearing a card again, that's kind of when I was like, yeah, I'm gonna make time for this. Because if I'm being completely honest, I was a little booked that week. I, I had a few things that I had to take care of. But once I was asked if I could make a painting of a dog with a card again, I would have been a fool to say no to that. That just sounds like fun. That sounds like one of the funniest things I'd ever heard. If you make me laugh, odds are I like you. If you're someone that appreciates funny art, odds are I like you too. Sometimes I do get a little upset and a little bit annoyed how people take art so damn serious. It's, come on, it's, it's playful, have fun. I guess I'm just rambling now, but this is just me saying that the reason why I made time for this painting, it's because it was a funny idea. If you like this episode, feel free to subscribe. The latest thing that I worked on was this pop art series, which you could find in the description. Eight paintings of some of my favorite pop artists. Don't forget to follow me on social medias, whether it's Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, and Tumblr. I also make comic books. I make two comic books right now. One of them is called Gil's Retro, which is a slice of life comic book. Really the premise of it is someone who just went through a breakup and is having to find a way to like himself again. And the other comic book, was one called Lads. Lads is about a red panda, a panda, a rabbit, and an alien. It's a story that's 
essentially about humanitarian causes. I do a series of essays about movies called Overpriced Coffee at the Movies, which is this thing that has an illustration attached to it. Besides that, there's also videos that are on YouTube. So subscribe so that you can watch these videos as I upload them. Anyway, be safe, be kind, be generous, be creative. I'll see you next time.